<clears throat> yeah, uh, golly. Um, so I had the had to have my pictures taken today uh, for a series of interviews that my company is doing with a online magazine type of thing. Um, and one of one of the, so there's a series of questions and then the, it's a five or six part series and our company was invited to participate in five or six of those things. And one of the questions was about <coughs> leadership, which was really interesting. And it got me thinking about leadership uh, afterwards uh, in war games uh, after I'd written my answers, but I had to get these stupid photographs taken and I hate getting my picture taken and all this sort of business. I'm super, super awkward uh, in front of cameras and things. And like, I hate not even, not even comfy doing this. Right. So, but this is for fun, not for professional purposes. But anyway, so it was the, the art, the, one of the questions was about leadership in, uh, you know, in the professional world. And it, it kind of got me thinking about leadership in war games and how that's represented and, and how it's represented at different levels too. So <clears throat> I, you know, the, the camera right now is sitting on top of the maps for baptism of fire and the or baptism by fire, I should say, uh, the, from the BCS system, which is from MMP. And in that game, there's no actual leader counters, although there there are there is a Rommel counter. Uh, so, but there's no pervasive leadership representation, I guess. So that was interesting for, from from my perspective that. Uh, it's not in there, right? But when you look at the HQ uh, ratings, how different they are for the different units in this game and in other modules from this series, you see a differential that is a representation or an abstract ab abstraction of leadership. If a if a you know, a, a, an HQ has has a range of eight versus someone else that has a range of five. There's a different capability there. There's an organizational capability. Maybe that also impacts the morale. Uh, <clears throat> you can see when units be, uh, are forced into an out of supply situation, uh, it, whether they're isolated or their MSR is broken, as the case may be. That that range, it, that command radius becomes important because it might be five hexes plus five that you get per the rules, or it might be eight hexes plus five, which is a significantly different range that you can be functional at and your, your units can work. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Now there is, of course, the, this is going to be backwards to you because I'm on face, face forward camera, uh, but there's the Rommel counter and you know, whatever, I don't know if you can really get it up because I'm not going to worry about trying to get to focus, uh, but the Rommel counter is giving you uh, a modification on activations. And I think it does a couple of things as well. I think that's it. Yeah, it's just a, a DRM on your activations. And, and he can be anywhere. You can choose him to be participating in one uh, side, uh, one, one formation or another formation, just w wherever, right? And hang on one sec. I'm going to mute my phone because it's going to start ringing in a sec. Okay. So, so that it, it affects affects the DRM on what they call a snafu role, your ability to have a full activation versus a partial or no activation. <clears throat> so I thought that was an interesting representation. I hadn't really thought about how leadership is applied at the battalion level. So the next sort of scale up is operational uh, or a higher level of operational, which, you know, like the OCS system, right? And that d definitely has no leaders at all in its games. But once again, it has HQs. Now, the exception is, of course, Act 2, which has a Rommel counter yet again, and other uh, British leaders as well. And they are allowed to be a little bit more dynamic and reactive in that system versus uh, other modules in the OCS system. Now, the latest, the uh, Third Winter, I think it's called, from OCS that's coming out, it has a swag of different HQ capabilities based on the HQs themselves and which side 
therefore, uh, that give, uh, give the armies extended capabilities or different capabilities or, or uh, enhance or detract from the standard features of an HQ <clears throat> based on which HQ it is. And I think that's a, a, a reflection of leadership as well. So I that was pretty interesting. Now, up at the strategic level, I haven't really seen a lot of uh, games that provide a uh, a leadership capability. I'm trying to think off the top of my head because I just kind of this kind of struck me as I was I was upstairs getting these pictures done, and uh, I was like, oh, leadership. Hmm. You know, well, let's go down and talk about that. That's kind of cool. So I want to record this, and we'll we'll see what's useful in it, and uh, and push it out later. I may edit it, or I may just dump it out there like I usually do, right? All professional and stuff. Uh, but at the strategic level, I'm trying to think through games that I've played. So, you know, EFS is not a strategic level system from GMT. It's it's more operational. That definitely doesn't have leaders that I'm aware of anyway. And then you look at Supreme Commander and Case Blue from GMT uh, and even... Um, so Deadly Northern Lights and Under an Iron Sky, uh, Last 60 Miles, they're kind of all operational. They don't have leader counters. So there's not a lot that goes on at the leadership level at... Uh... Oh, you know who does have it? Uh, Liberty Rose kind of has its own version of that, right? So <clears throat> there's a Hitler track, and as that track degrades... Uh, that impacts the number of reinforcements you get and replacements you get and things like that. So that's an interesting, that was an interesting way of uh, representing Hitler's influence on uh, on the game because it forces the German player to be, you know, either not uh, give up the territory or be more ag aggressive with counterattacking and things of that nature. So so that that's an interesting thing at a strategic level. Even down, sort of one step down in another MMP series, the Tactical Combat series, no, no real leaders there. Leaders are represented by the, the command prep capability and their, the ratings they're in. Uh, how long does it take you to change orders going from, say, a movement order to a combat order to a defensive or hasty defense to a prepared defense? There's different ratings will drive a different level of uh, capability and, and time that it'll take for you to have a good shot at implementing those orders. But down at the tactical level, lots of stuff down there. I'm, I'm, you know, where there's lots and lots of different games we could talk about there, uh, from ASL all the way through to, you know, Band of Brothers and the uh, co uh, Combat Commander, uh, MBT, Panzer. They all now have uh, leader counters that influence guys in their immediate vicinity, usually via some sort of morale role or a modifier to various roles. So. <clears throat> I just wonder how uh, whether that's a factor that designers seriously think about when they're, they're designing a game and, and building in the capabilities of, say, an HQ or a formation or uh, the design, overall design itself. It'd be interesting to talk to designers about their views on leadership and how they handle leadership. So if you are a designer, a war game designer, and you have games published already, and you uh, would be interested in having that conversation. I would love to get three or four different designers together and have a panel uh, conversation uh, about more than just leadership, but uh, about uh, leadership as it would certainly be one of the topics I'd want to cover off on. But so all those folks that may or may not watch <laughs> this video, please uh, let designers know uh, that uh, I would love to maybe run a panel on a Zoom call or something equivalent and I'll record that and see if there's something interesting that pops out of that as a, as a chance to discuss the, the greater context of leadership in war games and how they're represented uh, historically and ahistorically as the case may be. All right, that's all. Just a quick little thought there. I kind of rambled on for 10 minutes. We'll catch up. Ciao.